Well, the trap is set. We've got basically got a big point that sticks out here. We've got floaters all around the point here. We've got a blind back here. And these birds have been using this mud point quite a bit just to loaf on and day rest. But uh, we'll see what happens here. It's just about shooting time already. It's early in the season here, and we'll see what happens. Take them, guys, take them. Good shot. <laughs> You know, when you look at the United States, the state of North Dakota, you know, is still, I think, one of the last best places, you know, if you love to freelance and duck hunt. I mean, it's just, there's so many opportunities, there's so much water to hunt, there's so many good public areas. And also, too, it's an area where you can go out and get permission from private landowners by knocking on doors at times. And so, you look at the, the number of wetlands, the, just the sheer size of the prairie pothole in North Dakota, I mean, a, a big percentage of the ducks that come through the central flyway, they're hatched within 200 miles of right where we're standing. I mean, this is the epicenter of it all. You know, just with duck production and just the number of birds that come through here each fall, North Dakota is a special place if you love to hunt waterfall. You know, so it's early in the season here right now, you know, the first week of the season. And, you know, obviously the first week of the season, you're gonna have a lot of puddle ducks. You're gonna have a lot of birds that don't have very good plumage yet. And so you're, you're gonna see blue winged teal, there's some green winged teal, and gadwales, pintails, mallards, widgeon, you know, then a smattering of divers. But as you get later on in the year, you know, you're gonna see more bluebills especially. You're gonna see a lot more mallards that pull in, you know, and then obviously you're gonna get better plumage on the birds. So it just depends on what you're looking for when you come out. I always liked early season just because I felt like, well, <laughs> it's first crack at the birds. You know, you get a lot of birds that just haven't been educated by decoys yet. If you're looking for birds, you know, as far as a bird to mount, you know, you'd probably wanna come say the last couple of weeks of October, first couple of weeks of November. But if you're looking at just sheer numbers of puddle ducks especially, a lot of birds that just decoy in, <laughs> haven't seen a lot of decoy spreads yet, that's the beauty of the early season is you just get a lot of birds and get a lot of birds that really finish and do the decoys right. Take them guys, take them. Nice. Oh, isn't that beautiful? <laughs> oh, I love it. That was pretty, wasn't it? Those did what they were supposed to. Take them, guys, take them. <laughs> Widgeon. I like the variety. Getting kind of a mixed bag here. It's kind of cool how they come out of that fog, isn't it? Yeah, also the boom right, right in your face. Now 
know, a lot of times when we're hunting waterfall, I always felt like the first flock or two kind of tells you the story in the sense that you put all your decoys the way they should be as far as the birds coming into the wind. You've got a pocket where these birds can finish. And if the first few groups of birds come in wide or they come in short, you know, it's time to move decoys. And if you're gonna move decoys, do it right away and do it fast while you still have birds in the air, you know, and still have some time left in the morning to hunt. And so a lot of times, you know, we'll, we'll make adjustments throughout the day. And, uh, you know, one of the things that we noticed is that, you know, we just had our spinning wing decoys over too far. You know, we just pulled them up and a little bit tighter to the blind and, you know, our shots got much better after that adjustment. But uh, don't be afraid when you're waterfall hunting to, you know, size things up, analyze what these birds are doing and be concise. I mean, if you're gonna make a move, make an adjustment and do it and do it fast. And it's amazing how sometimes just the smallest modification or just the smallest little shift, you know, just moving a handful of decoys can really change the outcome of an entire morning. I've well, had some birds trickle in here and now this fog's burning off, which might really help us. Spindles are gonna look a lot better, nothing else. Oh, right here, right here. Don't move, don't move. Let's try him. Nice shot. Good. Nice shot. Right in front of the dog. <laughs> yeah, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one of the things I really enjoy about waterfall hunting, and I, I believe I've grown to appreciate this even more as I've gotten older, is just the camaraderie that waterfall hunting can bring in the sense that if I'm in a tree stand or deer hunting, if I'm in a, you know, if I'm in the woods trying to hunt a deer with a bow, I'm all by myself. And I love that solitude. But there's something about being in a duck blind and being with your friends, you know, being with people that you really like. And, you know, you're experiencing all these things together, you know, the sunrise over the marsh, birds coming into decoys, you know, making good shots, making bad shots, missing birds, you know, going in after a great day in the field or in the marsh and then going in and having breakfast in some little small town cafe that's one of the things i really enjoy about duck hunting is you know get four or five people together in a blind that you really like and you laugh all morning get to just experience these incredible sights i mean i never get tired of watching birds come into decoys i never get tired of watching ducks locked up and losing altitude i just it's a sight that just never gets old for me Take them, guys, take them. Whoa, oh, nice shot. Those took our heads off. <laughs> How many we get out of there, two or three? At least three. At least three, I think. Right here, right here. <laughs> I hit one, woo! <laughs> Oh, right here, right here. Oh, right here, right here, right here. Take them, guys. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Two on the low left. Call the shot. Oh yeah. Shoot him. Take him guys, take him. <laughs> 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 back, oh. Back. <laughs> oh, there's a Drake. Diver. Oh, look at that.
you know, I think there's a nostalgicness to hunting over water, you know, and the, and the beauty about hunting over water, you know, especially if you're just hunting these little day ponds or just spots where they just drop down to loaf during the day as they're going out to feed, it doesn't take many decoys. I mean, a lot of times, four dozen decoys is a big water spread. I mean, a lot of times you can get by with a dozen, two dozen decoys and just, you know, be concealed good. And it doesn't take a lot of equipment. It doesn't take a lot of gear. Sometimes, you know, it's easier to find access and easier to find spots when you're hunting over water. And there's a lot more public spots when you're hunting over water, but uh, don't be intimidated, you know, as far as if you've never done a lot of duck hunting, you've never done a lot of waterfall hunting. I really feel like this is something that anybody can do. If you're willing to put on a pair of chest waders, grab a couple dozen decoys, a good dog, and go watch the sunrise in the marsh. It's a beautiful thing. Two are coming in. Get ready here, guys. Take them, guys, take them. Don't come back. <laughs> Boy, they came in nice, didn't they? Oh. Guys, if nothing else, we've had some shooting today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we've got the... <laughs> <laughs> we can't necessarily always brag about it. No, we can't brag about the shooting today. <laughs> but boy, it's been fun. <laughs> That's why we're here. We're here to have fun. Get well. Oh, right here, right here, right out front. Right out front. Take them, take them, take them. Yay, nice work. Woo! <laughs> All right, Gadwell. Uh, two off to the left low. Two left <laughs> island. Not sure. Yeah, come right in. Teal. Take them. Hey, nice. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Breakfast time. Well, that's a wrap. <laughs> What a neat hunt, huh? A mixed bag, several different species, gadwell, widgeon, mallards. Camas back. Teal. <laughs> but these teal aren't gonna be around here too much longer, so. Love it. That dog can swim. <laughs> that dog can swim. <laughs> dog can swim. <laughs> that dog's gonna sleep good tonight. These drakes are just starting to get plumed out. Early in the season, that's probably one of the biggest challenges, IDing drakes, which it's a six duck limit here in North Dakota this particular year. Five can be mallards, two can be hens. And so that's a young drake there, but it's kind of a variety here. Widgeon, these are one of my favorite. Look at that, that's just a drake widgeon. Again, they get really beautiful full plumage. You see that white on the wing. Drake widgeon are just gorgeous. Gadwell. We've even had a few divers come by today. There's a bluebill there. There's a canvas back here. What a neat hunt. Which these little teal, these little teal will humble you. One of the best eating ducks there is. <laughs> 